Maleka steps on the fallen body, but the other man screams and runs away. She finds it weird that he ran away like that with no determination when the rebels are full of grudges and rush in spite. So it is possible they did not come in one group. She tells the shadow assassin to take care of the rest of the intruders and to keep a few of them alive to get information out of them. She heads toward Alon because she's nervous for some reason. Alon stands in her room with the children and tells them to hide, only coming out if she or the Emperor calls them, and not even coming out even if it is Malika. She assures them that since she's a knight, she will win. The children hide in a secret passage that Alon knows nothing of and she thinks that she could have escaped using the passage. Alon takes her sword and realizes that the enemy might be inside the palace. She worries that being part of the Imperial family will put them in danger for the rest of their lives. Alvair enters the room and tells her that he's here for her. If she quietly goes with him, he will not hurt her, because the person he wants to kill is only the Emperor. However, Alon does not believe him because she knows that her children have the Emperor's blood so they would be in danger. She might have hated the Emperor at one point, but right now, she has to fight. She draws her sword on Alvair and wavers, but his assistant appears from behind repeating the words that Alvair said a moment ago. Alvair signs saying that he did not want to fight. Since it is a two versus one match, Alon thinks that she just needs to endure until someone comes. Alvair knows that since she took care of a wild boar with a dagger, her skills are too good. However, the two men can make her sword fall to the ground because she hurt her hand recently. A soldier arrives from behind telling them to finish it sooner and that they are inexperienced, but Alvair still asks Alon nicely to come with them. Alon says to just eliminate her, so the soldier stabs her. Alvair shouts at him, but the soldier says that they only need the body, dead or alive. Alvair gets angry at the reinforcements sent by Hout Crescent and regrets accepting their volunteers. He presses the wound on Alon's body, but she says that she would die rather than become bait to catch the Emperor. Alvair asks if she loves the Emperor, if it's just her pride. Maleka enters the room only to find a blood stain on the floor. She tells the shadow assassins that they're too late and Alon has been kidnapped and hopes that she's safe. Two maids are talking about the fire when the Emperor and the Shadow Assassins arrive with a dark aura and ask about Alon. The children walk in the secret passage. They are afraid, but still think that since Alon is a knight, she'll be okay, and they have to hide well for if they are caught, their mother will be in even more trouble. The Emperor looks at the blood scene in Alon's room and orders Maleka to report. She kneels and tells him that they put out the fire, found traces of oil in the fire, and arrested some intruders. The Emperor tells her that he's not interested in all that and asks about Alon. Malekka reports that it seems there is a battle between Alon and the intruders and the blood belongs to Alon. He touches the blood thinking, why are they taking his happiness away, but calms himself saying that this is not a time to be shaking. He inquires about the children and she replies that they're still searching. The Emperor glares at her saying that they are not doing anything properly. She admits her fault and tells him that she will gladly accept any punishment. He's about to touch her, but reverts his hand and tells her to search for Alon and the children. Maleka notices that he's changed since he gave her a second chance. She wonders if the cause of this change is Alon and reprimands herself for not being able to protect something precious to him. She shows her determination to find her and the Emperor tells her to get up to the dungeons where the intruders are kept and are being questioned. The assassin there tells the Emperor that the intruder would not open his mouth. The Emperor sends him out and the intruder says he will not speak even if they tortured him even more. The Empress says that she would have stopped him if she saw this, but since they took her away, he will make them regret it. The Emperor heats the medal and tells him that he was trained personally in torture, unlike the guard before. While torturing him, he says he does not know this hurts him more, but knowing the fact that people do not die easily, he can use many torture methods. No one will come to save him, so he's gonna die like this. The Emperor is torching the intruder when a shadow assassin comes to report that there are traces of movement of the door in the fireplace. Leading to a secret passage, since there is no sign of resistance, they think that the children ran away from there. The Emperor decides to head to the Wind Palace and orders Maleka to extract more information from the intruder. The intruder curses him, saying that there is retribution for everything and that God will be the judge. The Emperor glares at him, telling them that since there is no God, his pleas would not be heard. The children keep walking when Enril says to take a break and Leanne agrees. They both sit down, and Real's stomach rumbles and he takes out the cookies he had hid to eat at night. He tells Leanne to eat the bigger one, but she says that since his stomach even rumbled loudly, he should eat the bigger one and shoves the cookie in his mouth. Both enjoy the cookies and Leanne helps Enril clean his mouth because it got dirty. She notices light approaching and they decide to run away. 
However, Enril falls and tells Leanne to run away by herself. She does not run away and closes her eyes while hugging Enril. When they hear the Emperor's voice, they start crying and hug him. They ask about Alon and the Emperor tells them that she was kidnapped. After noticing that the children look sad, he says to not worry because he will bring her back. Arisa sits in her room looking nervous, but Sarah reassures her that they hired professionals and experienced people. Arisa says that the plan was a success, it has to go as planned, after taking such a risk. Alvair and his assistant carry the unconscious Alon, but the soldier tells him to leave her with him. Alvair questions him that it was the, in the contract, but the soldier says that his goal to make a deal was to get her in the first place. Alvair's assistant tells him to deal with it because it is annoying. The soldier snaps his fingers and the men rush to attack them. The soldier plans to take Alon away when everyone is busy fighting and rushes toward her. A man asks Alvair if he'll be safe after breaking the contract like this, but Alvair tells him that he knows that Duke Crescent is behind them, and if it is known that the Duke touched the Emperor's woman, they will be the one in danger. The assistant tells Alvair that Alon ran away. Alon runs in her serious condition while leaving blood tracks. Leonhardt comes to report something to the Emperor, but the Shadow Assassin tells him to come back later. Leonhardt realizes that they are hiding something from him since he got news from an informant that someone was dragged into the dungeon, so that must mean there were intruders in the West Palace last night. He scolds himself for not being able to do anything and decides to find out who broke into the Wind Palace. He has countless suspects, but the first one he needs to meet is Arisa since he has not seen her since last time, and she is obsessed by power and wants to be the Empress, so Alon must have been a thorn in her side. Deciding so, he stands in front of her room, but is shocked to hear Arisa shout about some woman who ran away. Arisa panics about the situation, about how she spent all the money to request this, but they lost her. Sarah tries to calm her down, but she stares at her and finds Leonhardt entering her room. He asks about what she just said, but she denies saying anything. Leonhardt tells her to not change the topic and to tell him about the request she made. She averts her eyes, saying it is a personal matter, and tells him to leave the room. Leonhardt grabs her forcefully and tells her to tell the truth since he is her brother. She questions the word brother and shouts that he has never acted like one. He's not interested in her well-being and does not care about what she did. Even when their parents passed away, Sarah was the one beside her. Her voice trembles as she asks if he's pretending to be her brother now. She tells him that she put in a request at the underground agency to kidnap the woman named Delon from the Wind Palace, but they already lost her. While crying with tears, she tells him to find him herself. Leonhard says he always wanted to apologize to her, but now it's too late to say this and turns to his face, bidding her goodbye. Leonhard wonders if this would not have happened if he paid more attention to his surroundings, but it's already too late for regrets. Since he cannot get any more information out of Arisa, he has to find her on his own. He asks his servants to gather all of those who followed Arisa's orders recently. Three men present themselves in front of him and he notices that none of them is outstanding or has a good reputation. They probably use them because it's easy to clean up afterward. He smiles coldly and asks to talk about what they know. They tell him all about Alon's fight. Leonhard thinks that Arisa was not like this before, cooperating with unknown people and doing something against the Emperor. He tells them that he will deal with the knights under Arisa's order and to investigate the back alley agency where Arisa made the request. Alon keeps running and reaches close to the outer palace. She notices her seniors around is about to call out to them, but Alvair appears from behind, and he places his hand on her mouth, telling her to be quiet. Alvair can catch Alon, but he's too worried about the Imperial Guards in the area. His assistant suggests luring them the opposite direction so he can run away with Alon. Alvair does not like the idea, but he says that Alvair has something to accomplish, so he should not be caught. The guard notices the assistant and chase after him while Alvair runs in the opposite direction with Alon on his back. He senses Alon getting colder and wishes for her to hang on for a bit longer because the doctor is waiting in the new hideout. The Emperor tells Maleka that the ceremony for appointing titles to the prince and princess is in three days, but he is still not told the children. Maleka suggests telling them sooner, but he worries that Alon would get angry. However, he would rather have Alon get angry with him and hit him, for even if she hits him, he'd be happy. Maleka reassures him that Alon would return safely and suggests meeting the children. The children try their new clothes, but say they do not need new clothes since they have a lot. The woman tells them how royalty must wear fine clothes and persuades them with jewels. The emperor arrives and says that he has to talk to the children. The children watch Maleka, say that they miss her, and inquire about their mother. She tells them that the emperor is trying to find her and says that the emperor has something to tell them. The emperor fears the children might not want loyalty, but to assure their safety, he tells them that they'll become his children. The Emperor tells them that he is their father and explains to them that they are going to be a prince and a princess. 
The children ask if he's gonna marry Elan, and the Emperor tells them that that is right. They tell him they do not want to join the Imperial family because two people should only get married if they love each other. If he wants to marry their mother, he should ask her about how she feels first. So they tell him to wait until she comes back, but the Emperor suggests adding them to the family tree first and then waiting for Elan to return. The two refuse, so Malekka tries to explain to them that if they join the Imperial family, no one would be able to harm them and it would be easier to protect them and Elan. Enril hesitates, but Leanne agrees to do it because she does not want to be scared anymore and does not want to see Enril or Elan get hurt. If it means that she can protect them by being a princess, she would do so. Enril also agrees after putting it that way and Malekka praises them for making a wise decision. She tells them that they will rise to a position of power where they will no longer have to bow down to anyone. Elan wakes up in a bed and wonders if Alvair saved her since he has to keep her alive if he wants to lure the Emperor. Alvair enters the room with food and sits beside her. She glares at him, but he asks if she has the energy to hold the spoon while smiling. She shouts at him saying that she does not need his food, but he grabs her face and tells her that she has to. She has to eat this to stay alive. Elan smacks his hand away and tells him to let her go. He apologizes for being rough with her and tells her to not forget that she is still a hostage. He says that the Emperor is desperate to find her. All kinds of kings are running around in the city to find her. He did not know that the Emperor would go so far for her because he's a cold-hearted monster. So Alvair thanks Elan for allowing him to teach the Emperor what it's like to lose something precious. He offers Elan to cooperate with her and he would not hurt her. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and press that bell icon to know about our latest videos.